All right, good morning, KW Milwaukee on May 25th. I hope everybody's having an incredible start to your day. And we are going to get rocking and rolling the last team meeting before Memorial Day weekend. I hope you all have incredible plans heading up for this weekend. Uh, just a reminder, next week, uh, next week, Tuesday, we will not have a team meeting there. We always take a break after the holidays to allow people to get caught up, get back in the office, get your stuff together. And uh, I want to protect your guys' time. So there is no team meeting next week, Tuesday. Uh, but I hope everybody has a safe, enjoyable holiday. And for those of you that are traveling, travel safe. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. And um, as we've kind of let off team meeting the last couple of weeks with our mission, vision, values, belief system and perspective, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to touch on this morning uh, in, in, within our belief system of the Y4C2TEs is uh, the most recent, you know, today is for those of you who watch this morning's news, this morning was uh, the one year anniversary of George Floyd's path passing. Uh, and I wanted to touch on equity and opportunities for all. And um, I, I want to just make you know, a statement around the fact that we as a community have a long way to go and we as KW have a long way to go and we will continue to be incredible partners for you. And we are focused on making sure that we provide equity opportunities for everybody uh, and that our business model is inclusive and that no matter the location that you're in or where you work or the geography in which you want to sell homes, that you have the ability, the resources and the access to do so. Uh, and, and please, feedback is a gift, right? If there's things that we can be doing to better enhance your experience or partnership with us as a community, a small community within the greater Milwaukee community, uh, please let us know because uh, it's very important to us. And, and as I reflect on what the last year has brought for us in terms of reform and awareness and, and a lot of things around social justice, uh, it's an important part of, of who I am personally as a leader and also making sure that our people believe uh, that we're doing everything we possibly can to provide equity and opportunities for everybody. Um, and again, if there's feedback for it, um, please shoot it our way. I know that um, earlier first quarter and second quarter of the year, we had a handful of times the social equity and diversity uh, and inclusion task force had met a few times and what came of it was a handful of small and uh, small focused initiatives that we're working on as a company to be focused on. Uh, so I wanted to lead that this morning uh, as we reflect upon the past year and the past years of events, not only in Minneapolis, but Kenosha and, and many other places across the country. Um, but, you know, as a follow up to that, then, um, you know, we had an unbelievable opportunity, you know, Red Day, we've reflected on Red Day the, the last week, we talked about Zacharias Acres and what we were doing to help make, you know, in terms of equity and making people feel inclusive and, and the, the group of 60 to 70 individuals that came out to Zacharias Acres to help uh, kids with special needs uh, find a place where they feel valued and loved. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys last week, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Rick Stale, Willie Stale, Sydney Warner, Charlie Bowles and Terrell as these guys uh, helped load up all of the stuff that we collected for Mr. Bob's under the bridge uh, to serve the homeless community around the greater Milwaukee and greater Southeastern Wisconsin area. Uh, and, it, and we filled up a pickup truck and an entire trailer. And uh, Rick, Willie, Terrell, Sydney, Charlie Bowles, shout out to you guys. Thank you for uh, helping us load an entire trailer top to bottom, the pickup truck, and then going out to Mr. Bob's location up at the Ozaki County Nonprofit Center to help us sort uh, last week, Thursday, May 20th. Uh, so shout out to these guys. Shout out to all the KW agents who contributed to this. Uh, we sincerely appreciate all of your efforts, everything that you guys donated, time, energy, resources, connecting with clients to bring things in. Uh, and thank you to those five that, that gathered all the items up across all three locations and delivered them last week, Thursday, up to to Mr. Bob so they could sort it and then get it out to, to our homeless community here in Southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, one other thing, guys, just, uh, you know, as it relates to um, providing opportunities for people. And, and one of the things that we always try and do is really help support those who are supporting others. Uh, and so I, I, John Lorenz, who's a great KW agent, a great partner of ours, has from the last, I believe, 10 to 12 years has been running a golf outing uh, called Protect the Package. And it's something that he is super passionate about. It's something that he personally uh, drives and, and delivers for. And John asked for a few minutes just to, to give you an insight as to what the event looks like for him this year and how us as a community can help support that event. So Lorenz, I'm flipping it over to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Charlie, for a couple of minutes this morning. Uh, some of you remember last year, my first year, really my first summer with KW, bringing this to your attention. 
Uh, Protect the Package is a company I started years ago uh, with the goal of providing hope and humor to men fighting cancer, hence the name Protect the Package. Uh, last year, we took it to another level and we partnered up with a foundation called This Time Tomorrow, and they provide random acts of kindness for anybody that has been diagnosed and gone through any type of cancer treatments and has any kind of financial need. Um, so this will be my 14th Protect the Package golf outing. The first year we have moved it to Ironwood Golf Course in Sussex because for the last couple of years, we've completely sold out all 18 holes at our old course. So we needed to move it and make it bigger. So we have 27 holes. So we're, we can have 54 groups, 54 foursomes, greatly increasing the amount of money we can raise for the cause. Uh, so if you guys, if you could take a moment, if you have any interest in this, take a screenshot or whatever you want to do, take a photo of this little flyer right here. I'll be putting it out there in our Facebook groups quite a bit before now on July 17th, which is the date of the event. Um, but I'm looking for two things. You'll see at the top the registration for your foursomes at this time tomorrow.org backslash golf open. So you can go on there, it's really easy. All of the money goes directly to this time tomorrow foundation. Right underneath it, you're gonna see a long list of stuff that's included. I know everybody does golf outings. We try to uh, separate ourselves by making it quite a bit unique. Uh, we include your 18 holes, driving range. We have two food carts this year. For lunch, we have Street Saw. They won, the nat they won uh, national food truck races, competitions on the Food Network. For lunch, we have a great uh, barbecue truck out of Oconomowoc called Just Smoking It. So you're gonna be treated well with your food. Uh, we have a Bloody Mary bar and a juice bar. We have massage therapy there during registration. Uh, we have prizes and a lot more. So just to name a couple of things for your money. Um, the other thing too that I really need is if you look underneath Ironwood Stock is what I'm calling it. For those of you that don't golf and just wanna come out and enjoy the day, I have a live music tent that's gonna be placed between two holes and some amazing talent from Wisconsin uh, performing throughout the entire five-ish rounds of the golf outing. So if you're not a golfer, still come on out, bring a donation, bring a chair. And the nice thing is for those golfing, the people that aren't golfing have a chance to heckle you. They're right there, right next to the green, right next to the tee box. So you can become interactive with the golf outing even if you're not golfing. So it's just gonna be a wonderful event. We've moved it up to July. It's always been in August before, but I just would love to have KW really have a presence at this event. I know Charlie and his dad and Freddie played in the last year. We've had others interested. So please get your foursomes. We have 32 foursomes signed up already. So we have room for another 22. Uh, so let's make it happen and uh, see what we can do as a KW family. Cool. Lorenz, thank you. Guys, thank you, I'll just give you a little backstory that John won't tell you. He's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars um, across this event. It's a, as he alluded to, both my dad and brother and I played in it last year. It's a ton of fun. Uh, there's, there's smoke bombs, there's fireworks, there's live music, there's everything that a golf outing isn't supposed to be is what this is to help make it a fun day and a fun event to help raise money uh, for cancer. Uh, so I'll make sure to send this out in the follow-up and resources and, and know guys that we're always looking ways to support our community and part of our community is supporting our agents and agents who have uh, passionate beliefs around supporting events and things like that. Uh, which is why we give John the platform that we give him to help him, you know, support his cause. So, uh, Lorenz, thanks for jumping on. I'll make sure to send this out as well. Cool. All right, Lindsey Vranick, we're flipping over to you for Tech Tuesdays with an unbelievable opportunity of a new, um, new resource available to agents in command. So it's off to you. Yeah, you guys. So there is a personally branded quarterly magazine that is in command. So Maybe you've already seen this in the design section, um, but obviously we're halfway through the year. There are two quarterly magazine options in design. Um, so included in these magazines are three articles. So they're already built out for you, which is awesome. You don't have to personally brand it too much. It's plugging in your headshot, adding your contact information, but the content is already in there. You also have the space to add testimonials. You can promote local businesses and organizations. You can feature listings. 
Um, so this is an excellent opportunity. If you want to either download and print this, you can just print it out at the office. You can send it to a local print shop or order it through any um, printing company online. Um, the other option that you have, and I think this is excellent, is that you can actually share a digital link. Um, so you can include this in a monthly newsletter or a quarterly email to your database. Um, and one thing that I'll be going through specifically for tech training this week today and on Thursday in Lake Country is there's a custom smart plan that was created by another KW agent. And so you'll see that screenshot on the screen here. This is what that smart plan looks like. And so it actually takes the quarterly magazine and puts it in email form. So you'll see at the very bottom corner, you've got those three articles um, with a little blurb about each of them. And then there's a button link that links to um, that digital version of the magazine so that your consumers can view it completely online. So if you don't wanna print it and spend money printing it you know, professionally and sending it out, mailing it, this is a much easier option. So I'm specifically gonna go through how you can create this, this magazine and designs personally brand it, and then how to set up this smart plan so that you can send it digitally. Um, so the next screenshot, I think I have, yep, just, this is just gonna be how you can access it. So this is the design section. So this is where you'll, you'll find it within designs. And again, there's two options. So if you wanna go back and use the first quarter magazine and then send the second quarter later on, maybe next month, totally up to you. They're in there and available for you to personalize. Um, so I'll be going through how do you can add these pages in and you don't have to add every single page that's available. You can kind of pick and choose which ones, very similar to the listing and buyer presentations that are in designs. Um, so it's really the same editing process. Um, and my weekly plug for Marty Miller's 66 day challenge for command um, 5.0 is up and running. Um, this is an excellent opportunity if you're a new agent and you're just starting out in command. Um, these are short like five minute videos. So I really highly recommend taking some time taking five minutes a day just watching it. And he starts from the very beginning. Um, and so you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to watch if you already know how to add a content but you want to learn more about opportunities. These are awesome videos to take advantage. Watch these. They're super informative. He knows what he's talking about when, he, when it comes to command. Um, so search for Marty Miller on YouTube. Um, you can hit subscribe to his channel so that you'll get access um, and you can even get notifications for the new, newest video. All right, so you guys, this week's tech workshops, I am out in Tosa all day today. So um, today's tech workshop is in Tosa today at one o'clock. And then the same training is on Thursday out in Lake Country at 11 o'clock, right after productivity coaching. So guys, that's all I got. Automate, automate, automate. You want to, I mean, the command has an unbelievable ability to help you automate your lead generation. Why would you want to recreate the wheel around some of these, con around some of this content when it's already done for you with great um, resources? Leverage Lindsay as a one on one resource for you to help you automate your lead generation platform to help you create a megaphone for your brand and reputation. Guys, it's incredible stuff. Lindsay, thanks for sharing. All right, Steph, I'm flipping it over to you for compliance updates and give us a little update as to what's going on in the world of compliance. Good morning, you guys. Um, just a reminder that um, Joni and I have added a time on Thursdays, 1130 to 12 for just general help desk questions. Um, we had an excellent session yesterday. It was a general help, se general help desk session yesterday as well. Um, shout out to Bridget Ty for bringing her questions. No questions are too small. So please bring them Mondays and Thursdays, 1130 to 12. Same ID as the contract training um, Zoom link ID. Um, next, a reminder that the effective June 1st, the new home inspector bill will be in place. Uh, this Thursday between 10 and 11 with Jennifer Lindsley and Corey Lamott from the WRA, there's going to be a legal update live episode on it. Um, I'll have Charlie send the registration link in the uh, post meeting recap, um, but would love to have you guys attend that just to hear more information about the new home inspector bill. And then um, last week, 
Tuesday, Corey Lamont from the WRA um, held a session on writing creative offers in a hot market. Um, we did um, upload that YouTube video, or we uploaded that video to our YouTube channel, so now it's accessible for everybody. Um, we'll also send out a link for that in the um, post-meeting recap. Um, just wanted to touch on a few topics, well, all topics that were discussed. So great reminders on risk mitigation, um, just reminders on the fact that at the end of the day, when we're writing for our buyers and sellers and working with our buyers and sellers, that they have the ultimate say, and we are giving advice and our opinions, but ultimately it is their decision on how these uh, contracts are written. Um, she touched on writing cash offers, um, including the appraisal contingency, without the appraisal contingency, um, obtaining mortgages, regardless if you're including a financing contingency or not, um, proof of funds letters and the different forms that those can take. There was a lot of great discussion around the financing contingency and writing that without including an appraisal contingency. Um, and then the appraisal contingency itself, there's obviously a lot of um, different ways that we are writing those contingencies. Um, writing without home inspection contingencies, uh, writing with inspection contingencies and added verbiage around repair values. Um, Kimmy right now actually is working with Peter to see if we can get our own addendum uh, drafted by our attorney to um, include verbiage around modifying the um, inspection contingency as it relates to buyer communicating to seller that they will not uh, serve an amendment, request any repairs under a certain value. Um, escalation clauses, the latest adoption of providing the seller's closing costs, secondary offers, love letters, um, and then general drafting errors and vague language, definitely discussion around that and reminding that we need to slow down and take our time with writing these offers. Um, so yeah, we please encourage you to watch the video that we'll send out in the post-meeting recap. Um, and then also wanted to thank everybody. Maureen shared with me yesterday that we had 60%, Keller Williams had 60% of the attendance at that training last week. So just wanted to thank you guys for attending. And that is all I've got today. Cool, Steph, thank you guys. I, I had the opportunity to, uh, to listen to Corey's presentation. Um, and took a bunch of notes. One of the things I would say is there was a lot to unpack in that one hour conversation. It was almost like listening to an auctioneer. Uh, lots of little tidbits and nuggets. I would, and we made sure that we uploaded it to the YouTube channel so that you guys had access to it. Don't hesitate to reach out to it. If you need, uh, we will be sending it out in the insights and resources, a link to it as well, but lots of interesting commentary from Corey. Uh, and, it, and really it was ways in which to protect you and to mitigate your liability. So upcoming training and events. And I want to, I want to share a little bit of a thought with you guys, right? Is that, is it relates to upcoming trainings and events as to where we stand today within our world, right? And uh, I'm going to ask you a question. And my question is this, why are some corporations, athletic teams, mega churches, synagogues, other religious organizations more successful than others? Right. Why are some, why do some teams, communities, cultures, environments, why do they succeed or uh, why are they more successful in creating culture and community than others, right? Peter Gossman, culture, Bridget I, culture. Uh, big shout out to Amanda Schroeder. She's heard me talk about this enough. They're successful because of small groups. Right. And, and I want to give a shout out to Annie Jerzyk. We were having a conversation recently and she introduced to me this concept of Havra. OK. And, and the concept in practice within the Jewish faith is called Havra. And I'm going to read you something that was I found very, very interesting. Right. And a Havra. And this is a, more of an explanation or definition as to what Havra is. Havra. Uh, is fellowship, right, is a small group of like-minded Jews who assemble for the purposes of facilitating Shabbat and holiday prayer services, sharing communal experiences such as lifestyle of life, life cycle events or Jewish learning. Most Shavra place an emphasis on, I'm going to, allegoritarianism, 
which is a school of thought within political philosophy that builds from the concept of social equity, prioritizing it for all people, depending on participate, and it depends, Havra depends on participation by the entire community rather than top-down direction from clergy, right? And the reason I use this as an example and, and why I talk about, you know, how are mega churches or mega synagogues or mega religious organizations or corporations or athletic teams, how do they succeed? They succeed in small groups, right? In, in providing opportunities of culture and community within small groups where you feel a part of something, even though you're part of something bigger than what you are. And, and this concept of Havra was, was fascinating to me is the more and more I dug into it in the, in the theory behind it and the concept behind it and the success behind the concept of Havra. And, and I thought about Keller Williams and I thought about our culture and our community and how we, we really in the last year uh, where we, where the last year it was taken from us was, was concept of, of Havra, right? If I were to draw parallels uh, and, and providing opportunities to bring people together, to, to share in small groups, to share in practice, to share in life, life cycle and, and to share in the events of, of um, this business and whether you're a brand newly licensed person or you're very wildly successful and you make a, an incredible living in this business, uh, everybody has like-minded individuals that they like to collaborate with, that they like to share with, and, and whether you're trying to find new listings or help find buyers, it's all around the community and culture, right? And in and, and, and helping people get through uh, the way the, of the way in which the market of the moment works. Um, and, and so the reason I'm bringing this up now in, in front of training and education is, is, is one of the things that I'm going to be looking at in, in terms of leading you guys and planting seeds and helping you think about the ways in which you do business differently is also the way in which we reintegrate back into what we did and, and where we were before everything that happened in March of 2020, right? And, and um, I, again, I go back to this concept and parallels of Havra um, and providing opportunities for people to come together. And, and, and mastermind. And that's what you're going to see uh, in ways in which in, in some of this is we're going to learn, right? We're going to fail forward. We're going to find ways in which this is going to work as we reintegrate people back into offices and back into culture and back into communities and things like that. We'll find ways that'll work and we find ways that it won't. And we'll continue to push the envelope because I, here's what I do know. Small groups are successful for a reason. And the more opportunities we provide to you as a group to be in small groups with similar minded individuals will only help you personally. It will help help you professionally, and it will help you mentally with your mental health. Uh, and so I, I, I lead with Havra or small groups this morning uh, as, as I lead into some of the training and educational events that you'll see upcoming on the calendar in June. Uh, and, and one of the things I do want to point out uh, is just a shout out on uh, this week, Wednesday on the North Shore from 11 to 1, stop in for lunch. Focus Title is sponsoring lunch with Pedro's Food Truck right outside the office. It's free for anybody who wants to show up, no matter the location you're in. Come, come have lunch with a fellow agent, sit down at the library tables and, and participate in breaking bread with other people. Uh, and, and this week is the first opportunity that we're hosting at the North Shore in the June training calendar. You'll see it upcoming in uh, both innovation and in Lake Country, uh, but participate in breaking bread, participate in Havra, participate in, in getting to know your fellow agents and working through the issues of the market of the moment. Because here's what I know, when you do it together, you will go farther. And when you go alone, it is a lot harder, like pushing a boulder uphill. So June training calendar, what does this mean? A lot of it's going to be focused on, on bringing people back together. Handful of things I want to call out. One, um, Tuesdays and Thursdays with launch coaching and productivity are going to be back in person. We want to bring people back together to help um, uh, navigate the market of the moment. And, and the, for the launch coaching folks on Tuesdays and Thursdays in both Lake Country and North Shore, that will be in person. Uh, and both Janine, Amanda, Connie, the whole group is ready to provide that to you guys in person. And we're going to go back to that um, beginning in, in June. Um, handful of the things I want to call out next week, Wednesday on June 2nd, uh, Fairway Mortgage is the out of Madison is going to be coming in to talk about reverse mortgages. And it's not reverse mortgages in the way in which you think. It's taking, it's creatively thinking about ways in which you can leverage equity in someone's home to take money out of the equity to put put down to write cash offers. And this really helps those that are looking um, 
that have a lot of equity in their home. And there is a great presentation. The, these guys have run it by me. I wouldn't put it on the training calendar if I didn't think it was worthy of your time and ways in which you can leverage fi various different me financing mechanisms uh, for, to help your clients get into homes. A couple other things, how to, we're gonna have a panel discussion on Friday, June 4th around how to save a deal. The art of saving a deal truly is an art. Uh, you can see that the, the Pedro's food truck Right, break bread with your fellow Lake Country agents. will be in Lake Country on Thursday, June 3rd. So next Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m., a little bit more of a happy hour time frame. And then it'll be over in Innovation from 11 to 1 on Wednesday, June 9th. Coming up on June 11th, we got a lunch and learn. We're going to talk all around masterminding and have a guest speaker around client appreciation and client events, right? If anything has been taken away, so many of you guys have had incredible opportunities in the past around client appreciation and client events and thinking of ways in which you can do that differently. Uh, Paul Nikolic has been incredibly generous with his time this month in the month of June. Uh, he's going to be showing around his systems and models around how he navigates his buyers and how he shows homes to effectively manage efficiently using of his time. And then the following week on Wednesday is high level investing, high level investing. How does he look at investment portfolios and things like that? A couple other things I wanted to shout out. Maureen and Friends is coming back for the invite only group on Friday, the 18th. If you missed the uh, last week's an incredible conversation with Ashley Lunn out of San Diego, the recording has been sent out to that group. And then I'll be leading the admin mastermind this week or this month, coming back on Friday, June 25th. Also, big shout out to Gail Zeman, who continues to host the Agent to Agent platform for anybody who wants to come in and have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. Again, I, I would challenge you to think about the concept of Havra or think about the concept of small groups. That's what the Agent to Agent platform provides and Gail is willing to do on a one-on-one -on -one basis and get to know Gail and get to know her background and how she can really help you move forward uh, within your business. So shout out to Gail for, do, for hosting that. Mondays at the library tables over at KW Innovation. Feel free, anyone and everyone is welcome. Cool. So last week we shared a lot of vision, people and opportunity updates, right? Uh, we talked about our mission, vision values and how it's playing out. And we shared with you the concept of what the KW Milwaukee Southeastern region really looks like from an expansion and opportunity standpoint to provide full transparency as to what we're up to. We also shared around some of the uh, renovations that we plan for this summer here in the North Shore office specifically. So you can see how we're planning to reinvest in this business to ensure that this office space is the most attractive place for you guys uh, to transact real estate and to host your clients, to host your closings, and in and, and however in ways in which you want to work. The Lake Country office is incredible. The new in a space on innovation is phenomenal. And now it's our time to pour some investment and resources into our North Shore location. Now, with that, uh, one of the two other things I want to bring up. Last week, we're also seeking massive opportunities for incredibly talented people. One, we're looking for an agent services coordinator out in Lake Country. Shout out to Julia Ola, who is taking the next step in her career, moving down to Nashville, Tennessee with KW down there. Thank you, Juge, as you wrap up your week with us up here in Milwaukee. Thank you for everything that you've done and provided for our group. And then I'm also currently looking for a team leader to, to serve and lead the innovation group, right? And to really kind of hone in and build and helping us build the foundation of that community and culture. So if you know of anybody, a super talented individual, whether you're in the business, out of the business, it has to, don't have to have real estate experience. I'm just looking for a, a, a servant-minded leader to help us lead the group in innovation. Uh, so if you know of anybody, please give us a shout. Now, one other thing that I want to showcase to you, and this is a little bit of a sneak peek because it's not totally ready, but one of the things that we're always looking at doing is pouring our resources into you so that you have everything in one place. And one of the things that we recognized is right now, it can be a little bit splintered. Uh, so what I'm, I'm showing you here on your page is a new website that we will be launching here in June called kwrealtymke.com. And it's going to have a one-stop shop for all your resources, any questions you may have. Who do I go to? How do I find it? What does it look like? How do I access all the files for all the latest market stats and updates? How do I book a conference room? All those sorts of things we're going to house in one place for all three locations moving forward. Big shout out to Lindsey Vranick and Megan Casey, who have been building this and working on it in the background over the last several weeks to really launch this in June. What you'll find here on the homepage is, first of all, you can find the locations. And, and, and the first thing you'll notice is the June training calendar. You'll be able to download it, and it'll take you to anywhere and everywhere you need to go. 
right? The contract helpline right away on, on uh, the front page in case it, you need to understand, hey, I need some help with the contract helpline. Boom, give Andy and Stephanie a shout. A couple other things you'll notice, you need to reserve a conference room. Boom, we can do that. You can do it across any of the three locations and it will show you the availability of the conference rooms in any of the three locations and it'll allow you to book it on the spot. You need resources? Great. We got the video library. We got all the KW logos you could ever imagine in one place. Lots of people ask for the office rosters. So you have updated live updates as to the office rosters and contact information. So you don't have to Google it or search it. You'll have it all in one place. We got the new associate resource guide. We got company performance. We have lore. We have the finances. We got earnest money protocol. We got anything and everything you need all in one place. So I share this with you because we are looking at ways in which we can provide the value and resources you need in one common space for what you need here locally. KW provides us a lot on a macro level in a broad scale, but what do I need locally to help me serve my business all in one place? So shout out to Lindsay and Megan for helping pull this all together. We are going to be launching this hopefully right after Memorial Day so that you have all of this information in one location. And if there's something you think that this would, that the group would really benefit from, from this new website, give us a shout, drop us a line, give us some feedback. We would love, we want to make your jobs on your accessibility to access the resources as easy as humanly possible. Everything in one place. All right, jumping back into it. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. As we look at, he's sitting here on May 25th, and we are effectively essentially six months through the year. But if you're planning your business 90 days ahead, you're essentially, we're through 66% of the year. Think about that. We sit here almost on June 1st, but I'm challenging you to think that roughly 70% of the year should already be booked. Already be booked. Why? Because we're 90 days out. And what I wanted to review as we head into the Memorial Day weekend is to ground ourselves into where we are in the market of the moment. And I'm going to recap some things that I've talked about in the past. And I just want to replant the seed or more, maybe more so water the seed to really help you guys articulate. Maybe you're going to a backyard barbecue this Memorial Day weekend. Maybe you're going to meet up with tons of friends and family outside. You're going to go to a Bucks game. You're going to go to pick and save. You're going to go to wherever. And people are going to ask you what's going on in the market of the moment. And so I wanted to water a seed that's been planted on several occasions so that you can articulate exactly as what's happening in the market. And I will finish with the grocery store script of the market of the moment. So I've, I've talked about this a lot, but it, it continues to ring true for us, right? Uh, uh, Dr. Yoon, the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, provided us some insight late in 2020 around the major factors in favor of Milwaukee. And there's three things. One, there was sizable pent-up demand for housing. There was a serious lack of inventory, and homes and money are more affordable today than they were in the past two to three years. Right. When you look at it and when you look at the economic impacts of the recoveries of what we're coming out of, he talked about a U-shaped recovery and a V-shaped recovery. And very much so, we are starting to see the impacts of what a V-shaped recovery means. What I mean by that is a quick bounce back for what was lost. We had needed to mitigate major job losses, losses, which we have effectively done. If you're looking at the unemployment rate right now, unemployment rates uh, are really sitting around almost full unemployment or full employment, which is around 4%. Um, and there's pent up consumer demand to support one another to get through this, right? We've talked about this before. So the outlook in terms of what he provided us in the spring of 2020, here's kind of looking ahead a year later. Um, he said his outlook was essentially uncertain, but his three takeaways were this. Expect home prices to remain stable. Well, that happened. Two, the stock market and well, stock market wealth in cryptocurrency is volatile. Well, if any of you who have invested in cryptocurrency in the last week, let me, your portfolio has been extremely volatile. Anybody's portfolio has been extremely volatile in crypto. And the stock market has been a total roller coaster ride for the last 12 months. The one thing that has remained consistent in our lives, when this is the one thing that you really need to understand and learn, is real estate wealth continues to be one of the most consistent asset classes across where people can place money. And it was interesting last week, I had an opportunity to uh, golf in a golf outing with a handful of people and majority of them are in the finance world. And it was what they were talking around and around personal wealth management is many, many, many of their clients have shifted a lot of their wealth and a lot of their assets or a lot of their disposable wealth that they've had into real estate in the last six months. And because they've looking for more stable and consistent asset classes. And they were, these guys 
who work up at Pegasus, which is a small little boutique firm up in Mequon, uh, were telling me is, is, you know, is that's why you're seeing the secondary home market go bonkers. It's why you're seeing the lake market, Florida, all these different places, those markets are going bonkers because people are shifting wealth into stable and consistent assets, which is real estate right now. Now, jumping into it with uh, Dr. Mark Eppley with the Wisconsin School of Business leading the real estate uh, school there. It talked about, and we've talked about this before, the market is demographically driven. Right now, millennials are the largest generation ever. They're bigger than baby boomers, right? They married a little bit later. They're having children a little bit later, but they definitely still want to own a home. They're just deferring the choice to later in life, right? The peak first-time home buyers used to be in their 20s. Now it has shifted to their 30s. And the peak millennial cohort is reaching 30s between the three years of 2019 to 2022. There's 4 million plus in population each year through 2022. They are prime buyers for continued demand within the housing market. Now, when we look at continued demographically driven markets, homeowners are migrating or moving at the lowest rates ever, right? And they began tracking this data in 1947. Last, in 2019, 5% of homeowners moved across the U.S. And historically, we'd seen about a 10% turnover in the, in the um, inventory on an annual basis, right? Here's what we also know. Empty nesters are living longer. They're aging in place. They're just not selling their homes. And it's creating a significant shortage of supply. Now, I'm going to jump into a few new graphs for you guys. I just wanted to, to, to water the seed that we've talked about around demographics. And here is a Pew Research Center study that shows to you how millennials are now the largest demographic within the U.S. labor force. And remember, last year in southeastern Wisconsin, 41% of all transactions had a first-time home buyer, right? So as we, as we look at this, and we talk about what's next as it relates to the macro economy. And we talk about this K-shaped recovery. Well, and, and, and remember this, I, again, I'm just planting some seeds for you. In the US labor force, one in 20 people work in the travel industry, one in 12 work in the service industry. And last night, if you watched the Bucks game like I did, what are we starting to see? We're starting to see the service industry open up like a flower. What do I mean? Much more people are being vaccinated, much more things are starting to open up, much more people are getting back to work, and it is providing an absolute influx into our economy as it relates to consumer spending. What we're starting to see now is that K-shaped recovery of those industries that were directly impacted, and we're starting to see those industries that were directly impacted that had the largest impact as it relates to unemployment start to bring people back to work as consumers are getting out into the economy and spending money. Because guys, we talked about vaccination is, is key to rollout, is key to consumer confidence in terms of spending within the economy. Now, as it relates to that, vaccinations, here's what I would tell you. This is not a political statement. I am just simply using facts to tell a story. Facts remove subjective information or emotion from a conversation. If we look at the vaccination rollout across the state of Wisconsin, through May 24th, which is last week Friday, at least one dose for adults over the age of 16 who are eligible for the vaccination, at least those who received one dose, it was 50% of the total population across Wisconsin. This is very, very positive news as it relates to the consumer confidence index, right? It, where people are willing to go out and spend money. This continued trend of vaccination rollouts across Wisconsin and specifically in southeastern Wisconsin is very healthy. Why? Because here's what you got to remember, guys. When 72% of our total housing inventory makes up homes of less than 350,000, those uh, socioeconomics of those that were impacted most by the economy and what has gone on in the last 12 months are those that work or live within the 72% of the inventory within our industry, right? So this rollout of the vaccine is very important for consumer confidence and consumer spending, which will get people back to work and putting money in their pockets and helping us move through housing inventory. It's very positive signs for our industry. Now, how do I correlate this to what's going on within the market of the moment? Now, is here's what I did. I took a look back on a three-year historical average to look at how the last year is impacting. And all of this, mind you guys, I, I understand I'm giving you a lot of information right now. 
I'm going to boil this down to your grocery store script. So, so hang tight. Now let's boil this down to a three-year look going back to quarter one of 2018, looking through to quarter one of 2021. And for those of you who uh, need a little refresher or reminder, quarter one consists of January, February, March. Sales absorption rate, I always lead with it. It's the best indicator of demand and the continued demand. It's the percentage of inventory that goes under contract. In quarter one of 2021, 57. 3% of the inventory went under contract. When you compare that to quarter one of 2019, it was 40%. And when you look at it at quarter one of 2018, it was 41% of the inventory went under contract. Guys, that's insane. Because if you look at it, the high watermark over the last three years was 48%. Now, fast forward to quarter two of 2020, we have never been below the high watermark We've never been below of the high watermark over the last three years, which showed up in quarter two of 2019. We haven't been below that in the last essentially 12 months or the last four quarters. Uh, you can see here, quarter two was 49%, quarter three was 54%, quarter four was 50%. I mean, if you look at this, even just looking at quarter four versus quarter four of 2019, uh, I mean, we beat the best quarter ever in the last three years in the fourth quarter, which doesn't happen often, right? So I, I point that out to you is, is we continue to see incredibly strong demands, incredibly strong um, uh, buyer demand within the marketplace. And we, we are continue to beat the previous high watermark of the last three years, right? Now, the key here is demand trends have continued to build momentum. We'll see this again as quarter two results come out, which is essentially once uh, June is over. So that's April, May, and June. Now let's look at units sold. It's following similar patterns of prior years, right? So what I mean by that is you have uh, peaks in quarter two and quarter three, and then you have valleys in quarter uh, four and Q1, and then you have your peaks and then you have your valleys. But what you need to know is your pe the peaks and valleys over the last 12 months have exceeded what we had seen in prior years, right? Um, where we saw it spike was in Q3 of 2020. And what I mean by that is where we really saw a significant jump of coming out of the spring of 2020 happened in Q3 of 2020, which is July, August, September. And ever since we've hit that spike of what they would consider to be the V-shaped recovery within what has happened within the pandemic, uh, it has remained elevated ever since the prior three-year averages. When you look at the three-year averages, then moving ahead to quarter four of 2020 and quarter one of 2021. So ever since we saw the massive bounce back or the V-shaped recovery, they have remained elevated. Units sold has remained elevated uh, consistently quarter to quarter. Now, when we look at it from a days on market perspective, right? Historically, we see spikes of inventory sitting on the market in quarter one of any year, right? So quarter one of 2018, we see it here with 67 days on average, then it then it valleys and then it builds back up to quarter one and then it valleys and then it builds back up to quarter one and then it valleys. And then we've remained stable. If you look here through what's happened in 2020 is the spike never happened in terms of days on inventory, right? So inventory is efficiently moving through the system. The spikes weren't happening at historical rates. Now, when we look at total inventory, here's the interesting story. When you look at inventory peaks, typically, during quarter two and quarter three of any given year. If you look here at quarter two of 2018, it's 16,835 homes. In quarter two of 2019, there were 16,624 homes. Then we had quarter two of 2020, which was 14,000 homes, right? Quarter two and quarter three is usually see where we see peak inventory across the marketplace. Well, what happened was, is in Q2 of 2020 during the stay-at-home orders, it really was effectively what began the supply issues we're facing today. And it has compounded every quarter since because what was dropped or lost in these two quarters was not made up in the subsequent quarters moving forward, right? And it has continued to remain suppressed continually uh, as, as we've moved through this. So I, I share this with you to say, there's a lot of good things that are going on on the demand side. There's a lot of issues that we're having on the supply side. That should be no, no surprise to anybody. So how is all of this impacting pricing? 
So pricing, the one thing that remains stagnant from a pricing perspective is when you look at price per square foot. And the reason why you look at price per square foot is price per square foot is a stagnant measure. The square footage of a home really remains stag stable. When you look at it by some of the price points uh, that I've broken down in the three segments, sometimes homes will move from one segment to the next. And then it impacts those numbers. So there's a little bit of a wash. But when you look at price per square foot, it's a stagnant number because it's a fixed square footage of a home and what the price per square foot goes to. So when we look at the demand impacts that we've seen over the last three years, and we look at the supply impacts that we've seen really effectively starting in Q2 of 2020, what you're starting to see is the price per square foot is up 16%. So organic pricing is up 16% on a price per square foot basis when we look at it over the last three years. And I'm comparing this of quarter one of 21 versus quarter one of 2019, right? And I, everything I'm looking at is quarter one of 21 versus quarter one of 2019 because it's the it's a most effective baseline. And price per square foot is up 16%. So last thing, and then I'm gonna jump into my grocery store script of the domino effect. Homeownership rates in the United States is a fourth quarter of 2020 by age. And here's what you have. This is where I'm wrapping it back all together is here's what you have to understand, right? The market now is demographically driven. And if knowing that 41% of all transactions in Southeastern Wisconsin had a first time home buyer, and you look here at the percentage of home ownership across the United States by age, we have a significant portion of the population who controls the current inventory, which is essentially those ages 45 on up, 45 to 54, 55 to 64, 65 plus. Right. And so if you look at that and say, hmm, the majority of the inventory is controlled by lar by the largest segment of the population that controls the most amount of the real estate is over the age of 45 and 41 percent of transactions had a first time home buyer. We have a kink in the system. So here's the script. And I've used it many, many times at the grocery store, at a barbecue that we had at our house on Sunday that people were asking about the mar market. And here's the domino script that you need to understand if you want to articulate what's going on within the market of the moment. And this is where I boil all the information that I just spewed. Here's how you break it all down. The housing situation is like a gigantic game of dominoes. We are in a demographically driven market, right? The first domino that needs to fall is the downsizer. What do I mean by that? To see a significant number of homeowners who are aging in place, many of whom considered selling in 2020, right, whether they wanted to downsize, move to assisted living, or et cetera, did not do so. It created a backlog of available inventory. It starts here. The second domino, because the first domino didn't fall, is the trade-up consumer, right? The family or individuals who are looking to trade up from their current housing situation, but they can't find what they're looking for. And they, here's what everybody hears. They're not going to sell until they find something to buy. Where am I going to go if I don't have something to buy? So that creates the second domino that isn't falling. Now, here's your third domino. It's the first time home buyer, right? It's the trade because the trade up consumer, the people who are already in homes aren't selling until they find what they're looking for, which is actually in their inventory is what the home first time home buyer is seeking. It's and the first time home buyer is the largest demographic in the housing market today in terms of those that are looking. And in Wisconsin, 41% of all transactions in 2020 had a first time home buyer. And there's been an interesting compounding issue that the pandemic has caused and the advancement in healthcare. And it's this your downsizer with significant equity is now competing for the same inventory as first time home buyers, but they have more leverage in negotiations. They have more access to capital. They have a broader understanding of home ownership and they're more comfortable waiving contingencies because they understand what it means, right? So I share this with you is this is the domino. This is the market of the moment. And this is where we are. And this is what all the, the information is telling us. What I share with you around vaccination rates and the macro economy and the consumer uh, confidence index and those sorts of things, that's all good because it means that we need to get people spending money back in the economy, which is what we're starting to see. And people are coming back to, you know, Wisconsin's essentially fully employed right now. Um, but as it relates to the supply demand issues and some of the things that we've seen within the market, here's your script or the market of the moment and the dominoes that need to fall in order for us to alleviate some of the issues that we're having. In my professional opinion, I continue to believe that we will be in the market that we are in for at least another 12 to 18 months, potentially longer. But because of the way that the dominoes need to fall and how 
if these dominoes don't fall quickly in order to alleviate some of the issues we have, we will continue to be in a, a very strong buyer demand market, a very strong seller's market for the foreseeable future because of many of these demographically um, driven markets. So there it is. I also included the grocery store pitch that talked a little bit more about demographics specifically in case you're inclined uh, to provide or share that with some of your clients. Uh, but what I provide that to you is, is some of the commentary. Um, around what is going on within the market. And guys, here's the market ups, insights for you on a weekly basis. Here's what I know. Buyer, a buyer showing activity across showing time remains extremely high when we compare it versus 2019. We're going to see a dip this week because of the Memorial Day activities, but that's totally normal, totally prepared, and totally expected. Right? Moving ahead, when we look at sales absorption rates on a weekly basis, the market continues to build. It means that we're right in the middle of the market of the moment, in the heat of the moment, and where we are, and the market is building. If you just draw a linear line across here, it's just shooting straight up to the moon. We are in the heat of the moment right now. Now, when you look here across uh, units that went under contract, 662 units that went under contract last week across the five county metro area, uh, again, continued, continued momentum is, is building within the marketplace. Strong, strong uh, indicators of continued success heading into June and July, which is very, very positive heading into the summer months. And then here, when we look at new units under contract, last week, 728 units came under contract. It's a very solid number. If you go back here over the course of the last six, six weeks, uh, we have not really dipped below 600 units and really of, of um, let's just say four of the last or five of the last seven weeks, we've been above 700 new units. Again, very positive signs, the building momentum to total inventory. Now, here's where you see the total inventory numbers. Last week, there were 4,099 homes on the market. That is ridiculously low for the time of year, but here's the positives. The market bottomed out eight weeks ago. And they bottom marking out at three, essentially 3,800 units. The fact that we're now seeing incremental gains with new units coming onto the marketplace, and we're starting to see the watermark of total inventory across the market hovering around 4,000 units is very, very positive for our industry. So guys, that is it. That is the market of the moment. That is where the dominoes will need to fall in order to help you succeed. Uh, I will make sure to send this out to this group immediately afterwards. Diana will send it out to the Lake Country crew. Uh, hey, guys, have a phenomenal Memorial Day weekend. Lake Country crew, I'll let you jet off to the Lake Country meetup. North Shore crew, I'll switch over to new listings and buy our needs. Guys, have a great Memorial Day. Reminder, no team meeting next week. Anything you need, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, who has uh, stuff they wanna throw out? Charlie, if I could go for JSG, I have a few. 